Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to DOTS, the last session before the social. <laughs> I like that enthusiasm. We need more of that in this big space. Can we have more? Try again. Last session before the social. Excellent. <laughs> so the first big piece of news to announce is that we are the DOTS working group. Because of all your hard work since Dallas and putting things on the mailing list, working through the charter and putting some ideas about what that scope is, we are now approved to really make some progress and get some things standardized. So again, ITF note well kinds of things. Uh, there's IPR issues, so please kind of read through that. If you have any concerns, feel free to kind of ask us. And of course, all of this is being recorded for later consideration and for all our remote participants. Next slide. Administratively, the first thing we need is a Jabber scribe. Who can help us with that? Perfect. Thank you. And the other thing we need to do is start off with the, with the blue sheets. We unfortunately have one clipboard, so we're going to have to make the whole thing go around the room. When it gets to the back, if I could ask whoever's sitting in the back row to bring it back up, and we can do another round for whoever needs to, to get it done. Agenda-wise, we only have 60 minutes, so that's actually relatively little time to get through a lot of material. Tentatively, the thinking is to do the following, to have a use case discussion around two drafts that we have, have a requirements discussion around one draft and a presentation, and then from there, have a conversation around where we need to go with the use cases, where we should go with the requirements. So as we do the use cases and the requirements, uh, we'd ask that you only ask clarifying questions and save bigger conversations about direction to the discussion portion. And then after that, we're going to turn to talk about a couple of drafts, some updated, some new, that hint and talk us about a little bit about requirements, but also start talking about implementation. So we wanted to really front load the use cases and the requirements. But with that, I'll take a pause. Would anyone like to bash this existing agenda? Okay. So with that... Uh, just quickly to review the charter that just got approved. This is the opening paragraph of that. And what we're in the business of trying to do here today in DOTS is to begin the standardization of the telemetry and threat handling signaling that various network elements would need to do, whether they're in the detection, classification, traceback, or mitigation business. Uh, for those that are seeing this for the first time, the URL is there at the bottom, and that can help orange you with all the other details. The thing I'd really like to show you is that we have a very aggressive timeline. We have three primary milestones. What we're hoping to accomplish is by early 2016, get requirements and use case documents written to scope out what exactly we're doing. And then in relatively short order, follow that with the protocol transport document and a data model document. So primarily, we're talking about three different classes of deliverables here. Before we get into the technical discussion, I wanted to, to show you what the questions were that we're going to be asking you when that discussion is done. So as you're hearing talk about the use cases and the requirements and all the different perspectives, one thing I would ask is first think about where do you think we should head with those use cases? So we have a number of individual drafts. There's also some conversation on the mailing list that isn't captured anywhere. So how would you like to see all of that formulated? Would you like to see multiple working group drafts for the use cases? Would you like to see a single a single working group document capturing all the use cases. And we need to do similar thinking for that with the requirements. And then certainly we'd like to talk a little bit about who's thinking about implementing this. So with that, uh, I turn it over to the beginning of the technical agenda. So Daniel is going to be the first presenting on our on our use cases. And again, just to just to clarify again, the thinking is clarifying questions only when the individual speakers for the use cases and the requirements are up, and then we'll have time, a little bit of time for discussion after all of that is wrapped up. Hi, good morning. Oh, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna well I'm gonna try to to address some of the use case I envision. Um, Can you hear me? Okay, right, it's much better. So I will try to describe briefly some of the use case. Uh, basically, the idea of this use case is to see, agree on the scope of DOTs and see whether there are any additional use cases. So um, next slide. So 
Well, the, the, the idea I had initially was that in order to mitigate DDoS, we need collaboration and uh, coordination between uh, the different um, different uh, DDoS devices, appliance, and some kind of programmability. So, next slide. So, well, the other the overall picture is that I would say you have a DDoS orchestrator, um, and that is interacting between uh, DDoS monitoring functions and DDoS mitigation functions. So, he's interacting with those through a DDoS programming interface. Um, well, the programming interface also involves some alert service and uh, also some interaction between the DDoS orchestrator. So basically the idea is to to define where is the scope of dots in that and uh, what we really want to address. So um, probably the, the figure would be a little bit more different if um, it had been presented um, before the I2NFS. So currently my opinion would be that uh, the DDoS programming interface should be part of the I2NFS and maybe the scope of that should be reduced to the other service. Christian? Just one clarifying, clarifying, clarifying question. When you mention DDoS orchestrator, uh, do you mean the response orchestrator? The, well, the de you mean the defense or do you mean the offense? Oh, no, no, that's for the defense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's the. It should be seen like in a like a controller. Because, because controller. I mean, when a normal person hears DDoS orchestrator, they have the idea of the other side. Okay. On, on the DDoS programming interface, is to run a DDoS against your enemies? No, it's the same. We we well, the the scope is to to mitigate it all. Well, I guess. At least it's my use case. <laughs> so, um, next slide. So, I came with, the, the first scenario is a symmetry, well, what I call the on-premise symmetry. Well, you have a DDoS appliance. So, it's an appliance that is supposed to mitigate DDoS attacks. Usually, it has a monitoring and mitigation facilities as well as the alert service inside. So. Well, what we expected, what we expect is some uh, relation um, with the DDoS configuration, or what we call next on the next slide, orchestrator, um, in order to coordinate this uh, DDoS appliance. Next slide. So this is what I represented by the programming interface. But I, currently, at this time, my understanding is that this programming interface should be um, uh, restricted to a kind of alert service. So it's like you define some threshold and say, well, when this threshold are just being reached, send me an alert. Uh, it's not really uh, having an I2NFS uh, interface. So next slide. So, well, an another one is that it's what I call the on-premises symmetric, which means that uh, in some cases you have uh, mitigation, um, well, DDoS um, appliance, uh, that are specialized for mitigation and DDoS for appliance for monitoring. So, well, the idea is that you can share between uh, multiple uh, links the mitigations. So, well, yeah, the way is that when you notice that some traffic is being uh, suspicious, you redirect those with a with a network element to this mitigations link. Well, the link where the DDoS mitigation um, appliance is. And so only for the suspicious traffic. So in that clarification. Okay. Clarify, uh, Scott Barbic. The In all these use cases, and even in the draft, um, I think the big question I keep looking at it uh, in, in light of is how, it, as use cases, how prescriptive are some of these components in your mind as existing or being defined in the in the standard versus the notion of being an inter just an interface and that can be anything. Are these just examples of what could be on other, either side of the interface or in your mind, this is the use case, this is, this is how it should be? Oh, no, um, well, I'm not sure I get the question. Um, it could be any element and well, the only thing we are looking at is 
way to to receive feedbacks from these elements. So it can be an already existing hardware where you just add one service. It can be a virtual one. It can be a combination of these two functions or. So it, yeah. So as a use case, there could be many things. You know, you could implement this in many ways. But what we're what maybe you would say is, or what I'm hoping you would say is, what we stop at the interface level between the two, you know, the receiver and the and the sender. But all these things could exist in a particular implementation, particular use case. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't see. Well, we don't have to. Well, we are not going to define what is the DDoS monitoring appliance, for example. Um, we are. Uh, well, my understanding is that we we should only be focused on the interface okay. between these two. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Well, it's not an architecture document when I recommend some architecture either. So that's the asymmetric one. And so uh, basically you can see that the DDoS monitoring appliance is sending a lot of information to the DDoS orchestrator. So uh, on the next slide, what we can expect from DOTS is that um, you, instead of sending all the, the traffic, for example, well, all the, the information related to the traffic, you can only reduce that to one alert, So which is represented by the DDoS programming interface. So it's only one alert that say, well, the threshold has been reached, and you can provide even to some additional information, but that's um, up to then the DDoS um, orchestrator to take the decision. Next slide. So, well, with clouds, the cloud uh, use case, I just wanted to mention that um, the alert can be sent um, to uh, on-premise, so some to a device that is uh, on a given domain, but it can also be sent outside to a third party, for example. In this case, the third party is going to be cloud because it doesn't mean anything. So, um, so next slide. So, well, basically, when the, it can be well, the alert can be sent by anyone, any device. Uh, in that case, I represented um, the. D the alert sent by the DDoS orchestrator to the DDoS mitigation, and um, maybe it's, I, don't, I don't know exactly who is taking the decision to forward the traffic uh, that is suspicious to the cloud DDoS mitigation, but that uh, seems to me now quite out of scope of that one, defining who is doing so. It's just sending the alert. Uh, next slide. So, well, this is not doesn't bring much information. So these are the kind of use case I, I envision and uh, try to define the scope of those always as um, some, some of the use cases. Any questions? Uh, <clears throat> Hi, uh, Daryl Lewis Cisco. Um, in this slide here, uh, are you are you proposing this as kind of a reference architecture or an example architecture so you, of the things that need to go into the protocol you're, that is eventually maybe proposed? Is that the idea? The, I mean, uh, this slide? Yeah. No, uh, I mean, this slide, well, the slides were done before I2NFS. So the presentation we had was um, quite helpful to define um, what's going to be the scope of dots regarding to I2NFS, and I really wanted to have a separation between those two. So um, what I wanted to, is to have to clearly identify, well, you have a DDoS client and uh, speaking to someone else. And I thought I mentioned this uh, the DOS agent. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not specifying specifically what he's doing. And um, some of the, it's possible interactions. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, system configuration, I don't know if we expect that. Anymore, I'm not sure. Um, DDoS system states, well, it might be for monitoring or if you have different threshold to define. But um, so I, I think that one of the things that may help looking at this is to clearly define what are things that the management plane of a of a mitigation service provider might be expected to handle that are subscription time events. 
right? Setting up the ability to announce the customer's prefixes to redirect traffic, uh, to set baselining or configurations of the mitigation on a per customer basis, and clearly separate those from what you might want to uh, do in real time or have a protocol that's outside the routing system or outside the management plane to to or to to achieve. Yeah, but I think if you're announcing some prefix or some specific data, then it's more related to. Uh, no, I, that's just one part of the system. Okay. Right? One part of one minor part of the system is getting traffic to the mitigation center. The the, the other parts of the system that seem interesting is letting a letting a customer or some end end site declare that they they have an issue and then doing some and then doing something about that second step and then filtering and and, and reinjecting yep. the traffic being the third. So th that's good feedback. Again, let's keep it to clarifying questions, and we're going to shut off the line for this draft. Oh. And please state your name for the mic. Thiru, uh, in one of the use cases, you had multiple DDoS orchestrators. What is the reason for having multiple DDoS orchestrators? Multiple. Uh, so what is the use case for multiple? Um, mm -hmm. Well, if we want things to be complex, we could say, well, I'm orchestrating my own network. And when I see that the attack is beyond my capacity, I'm asking to a third party, can you handle with that? Uh, so I can, well, one way is to say you're going to handle with the wall suspicious traffic. And in some way, you can say, well, we can cooperate on some things. So that's part of, there might be some interaction between uh, DDoS orchestrators. That's um, uh, Doug Montgomery, I had two simple, maybe, clarifying questions about this picture. So is the only thing that you're suggesting is dots, if you will, is the interaction between the client and the, the dots client and the dot agent? No other arrows here are part of dots or not? Well, um, yeah, I, n no. Because uh, it's mo mostly the, the agent. The audience voted yes, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it depends. Well, that, that's part of the questions. I mean, um, but um, I would try to, to limit the interaction between the agent and um, the, the internal system. But if you're asking the system to send an alert when something is happening, well, it needs to have some access, at least read access to some monitoring events or some kind of things like that. Right, but whether that's considered dots or just something else, I, I guess I was trying to figure that out. The, the other thing I was trying to figure out is, is if you would click back to the previous more complex picture. So just everything that wasn't in the orchestrator has been subsumed into the now go forward, whatever the lower box. Uh, go, go forward one slide now. Forward. So everything that wasn't the orchestrator is now in this bottom box, and we're calling that the dots interface. Is that what happened there? Oh, I was trying to follow the transition from like a, one of the previous diagrams, which have all these components in here. No, um, well, all those components okay. became the DDoS so system. I don't think we should stay too much long in in this in this slide because particularly the question with this slide was, do we want something that, that looks like to I2 RS? For DDoS mitigation, what I2RS is for routing, do we want that for DDoS mitigation? These sound like good things for the discussion. Thanks. Okay, so moving on now, Frank. No, uh, please save it for the discussion. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Frank Xia from Huawei. Uh, this is another DOS use cases draft. Uh, we call it the DOS extended use, uh, use case. Um, in the first, uh, okay, to the uh, next page. Okay. Uh, in the first page, I try to, um, <coughs> try to give my, my, my personal understanding of the potential work of the whole outline of the DOS architecture. Maybe, um, I think that, uh, the, the DOS system can, uh, is a, firstly, it's a collaborative and distributed system. It should, uh, it, it may be included uh, several elements, which include uh, the 
uh, first, uh, I think we should have a, a centralized, centralized controller, a digital controller. Then uh, we have the, uh, maybe we, we, we need a, a entity DOS detection center. Uh, this, uh, this element is mainly for the uh, collector, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the thread or the event information or some flow sample information and do some centralized uh, analysis or data mining technology to, to detect, uh, to monitor in the network. And uh, also we have several network elements which can be a uh, traditional or, or the network devices, router or switch. Uh, also, it, it, uh, it, uh, it also, uh, also can be the specified entity DOS applies. Uh, it's more sophisticated and intelligent to directly uh, monitoring the, the, the attack events. And uh, also um, for, for some more, for some more idea, I think uh, uh, maybe uh, a country, uh, the, the cloud-based entity DOS service is very, very popular. So uh, uh, this is also uh, the, 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 the original reason that we proposed that to, to do some work in ITF because we need some secondary negotiation between the on-premise entity DOS, uh, entity DOS devices and the cloud-based entity DOS service. So this is also very important. The, the last part is about if we consider the, uh, how to support the inter-domain uh, entity DOS uh, function. So uh, this is a more, more, uh, more big uh, scenario. So maybe we, we need a coordinator to, uh, to, to help uh, the different operators to, uh, to coordinate the uh, entity DOS request and do the help work like this. So, and uh, we have all these elements and we have uh, five, five possible interfaces between all these elements. Uh, they are the control signaling interface or detector signaling or share signaling, a report or coordinator. So that's all our, con uh, our current understanding of the post potential DOS architecture. Okay, uh, next please. Okay, uh, so uh, why we uh, why uh, the 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 the, uh, the background that we write this uh, uh, extended use case draft is that uh, we think that uh, a specific entity DOS system uh, is influenced by many variable variables, uh, which include that uh, uh, the first one is about architecture. Uh, if we choose the uh, uh, whether we choose the centralized architecture or the distributed, totally distributed architecture. Oh, uh, uh, the second variable that uh, uh, whether we use, we just collect the, uh, the flow sample information from the forwarding devices, or oh, oh, we can use some uh, specified entity DOS device appliance to get the attack events. Uh, there are different uh, uh, detecting methods. And, uh, and, and also we can static, uh, they deploy the, the entity device, entity DOS appliance to the network, or we can use some new technology, NFV technology, uh, to deploy, to, to dynamically to deploy the, our entity DOS appliance. And other variables can include uh, the, uh, what is the uh, traceback mechanism that we choose, and, uh, and the different role, maybe have different uh, uh, solutions. Uh, if you are a, a traditional network operator, or if you are the, um, uh, Spec, uh, or if you are entity DOS service provider, we are, have different different choice. And uh, okay, I, another is <laughs> the interdomain coordination issues. So based on all uh, all of these uh, variables, uh, uh, what we try to do is uh, we try to identify the valuable and the promising use cases to derive the requirements for multi-technology integrative and collaborative entity DOS solutions. And uh, it can help us to identify the DOS work, uh, what we can do. Uh, maybe it's a step by step. If, uh, yeah, we, we can uh, first uh, solve the most old, uh, most urgent, and most simple scenario. Then we uh, solve the next step work. Okay, next page. Okay, so uh, I, I wasted some time. So, so sorry. Uh, okay, this is our use cases. Uh, 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 the content of our, our draft. We, in this draft, we proposed uh, two use cases. Uh, these two use cases illustrate uh, uh, more scenarios and the multiple ways to implement the, uh, uh, to, uh, for the implementation within the, we, we think it can be under the current uh, DOS work scope. 
the first one is that we collect and correlate the security-related flow information from network forwarding devices, for example, the router and switch. And based on this information and the centralized uh, data mining or analysis process, we can proactively detect the DDoS attack by, by, by this way. Uh, I think this is a future trend. Yeah. And uh, uh, second use case is uh, we use the dynamic and distributed anti-DDoS solution to uh, create the VNF, uh, anti-DDoS VNF and deploy them to the edge of the network on demand. Okay, uh, next page. Okay, this is the first use cases. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about uh, details. Actually, this, uh, this is a, uh, uh, this is a, a closed loop uh, feedback system. Uh, we have the controller, we have the, uh, we have the uh, flow collector and, uh, and uh, based on this flow, uh, based on this loop, we can, we can get information, we can mitigate the uh, DDoS attack. Okay, this is the uh, first one use case, and uh, next page. Uh, next page is about the uh, about the deployment stage of the anti-DDoS system. And uh, here, the key point is about uh, that if you are a network operator, you can control the, your, your your network, and uh, by using the current uh, uh, NFE technologies, you can deploy the, your uh, your anti-DDoS devices. Modulize the anti-DDoS devices to the near source location, and uh, and it can uh, help you to uh, very efficiently to mitigate the anti-DDoS attack. So, but the key problem here is that how to source tracking, how to do the source tracking, how to, to how to find the right place to deploy the, your VNS anti-DDoS appliance. Okay, uh, next page. Um, I, I want to uh, take this chance to uh, to to give a uh, Justification that uh, uh, the flow sampling technology is, can be used uh, to detect uh, the anti-DDoS attack. Because, uh, for example, in, in this use case, uh, in this in this example, we, we can see that for a TCP sync flood, uh, we we can uh, detect uh, the flow characteristics. Uh, for example, it's uh, it's uh, wrong, it's bad bad direction delay, it's uh, uh, it's a session complete rate, or it's uh, uh, it's half connection uh, number. All these uh, metrics can be uh, can be detected. Is, is this use case stuff? No, no. It's just an uh, example. Yeah, right. Just so, one example right. about the solution. Uh, flow get the flow sample information. Sorry. Right. So uh, use case. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. Next page. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, we 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 uh, we we are planning to add uh, one more use cases in the. Uh, next version uh, is about the interdomain uh, anti DDoS coordination. Uh, uh, actually, the the technology is very similar with the uh, interdomain uh, anti DDoS solution. The 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 I think the key difference or the key uh, key problem or key uh, difficulty is that the uh, how to construct the uh, the trust or the authentication relation between the different vendors. If we if we can have the trust model. To, uh, to, to, between the different operators, uh, we, we can, we, we can achieve the interdomain and the DDoS, uh, goal. Okay, uh, uh, next page. So, uh, okay, the next step, we, we try to uh, solicit, uh, more comments from, from your, uh, your, your experts and uh, keep on improving the current draft. Yeah, maybe, uh, uh, we, 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 maybe possibly we can develop the architecture draft for software. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Any comments? By the way, thank you very much for staying so good on time. Highly appreciate it. Um, Excellent, so Andreas. Could you go back to your first use case? I just have a question as to how much of that, if we look at the various interfaces that you have here or reference points, how much or how many of those do you see being addressed by DOTS? Uh, you mean uh, you mean how many interfaces? Yeah, in these out, use out of cases? everything that I see, I don't disagree with the use case scenario. I'm curious as to you know, in your view, how much of this is something that thoughts should be tackled? How many of these interfaces? Uh, are looking at? Yeah, let me count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, I think we uh, just like I said, uh, we we cannot do all the work uh, in 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 a very short time. I think uh, we we can step by step. 
in current stage, I think uh, 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 some some technologies already uh, mature, or we we can uh, specify the. For example, we can specify the uh, flow sampling interfaces. Uh, uh, how to extend the uh, IP fix protocol to uh, to convey some uh, attack information and uh, to the centralized uh, analyzer center and uh, to detect uh, the attack. And uh, I also think that the the interface three. We're going to cut uh, off the line here. Yeah, two. one three. I I also think they they can be. Uh, specified in uh, uh, in DOS because uh, the the three is about uh, how to how to control or how to signaling to the network device or the specified uh, anti DOS device to do some security policy and to uh, to suppression or or clean the traffic. All right. So, yeah. so I know we're short on time, so oh, I'm not sorry. going to go into detail, but I think that's probably important for the group right, to get clarity around. How much of this do we actually think is in scope yeah, for the initial yeah. sort of We can discuss. Yeah, yeah, we can discuss it first. Yeah. Hi, uh, Da Chen from Alibaba. So I'm quite curious about the NFV stuff. Uh, you mentioned that you uh, use NFV to uh, dynamically deploy the DDoS system. Do you have any uh, research being done or do you have any yeah, products? We, yeah, yeah, we have already done some research. And, uh, uh, I mean, you, uh, you, you, are, you try to use, uh, virtual machine. For example, to... yeah, yeah, for example, you can, uh, based on the, based on the, uh, some, some flow, uh, statics information, you can count on the ranking of, uh, what, what, where the, the, uh, where the top, top end, uh, traffic from and uh, you can, you can deploy the, you can find the right place to deploy your, a virtual machine to do yeah. the yeah okay. but the the the, the primacy uh the but the it based the this um, solution is based that you are the uh network operator i think because uh only if you can control your network you can deploy the the device to the right location okay then you you direct the traffic to a server and server that there's a virtual machine running on a server the, the virtual machine will deal with the uh, you you uh, you That's just uh, deploy the, the uh, VNF and it does applies to the network edge, and uh, the traffic we are we are we are travel through that uh, we travel through that devices and uh, it will be clean right, to the near source. Okay. Location. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Musk, it's <clears throat> in answer to the question of how much do we think this is in within dot scope and what might not be. Um, we'll need to look at some of these things and, for example, on um, the flow sampling, um, is that uh, um, something where some other uh, methodology can be used like that? You know, I keep an eye on miles um, a as an example. It may not be there, but keeping our eye out in terms of other technologies which are, which are part of this landscape, which may be of assistance as, as, we, as we look at them. Yeah, yes. Should it be considered, yeah. Thanks, Frank. Okay, thank you. So moving on in terms of presentations, we're now talking about requirements. So Andrew. Good evening. Uh, Andrew Mortensen from Arbor Networks. Can't hear me. How about now? Better? All right. Once again, Andrew Mortensen from Arbor Networks. Uh, I, I have no colors on my slides, so I hope uh, that will be adequate. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to keep this very brief because uh, my, my draft was accepted very late in the game, and I hope everyone, has everybody here had a chance to read it? Show of hands, who's read it? Few, okay. Um, so I had made some assumptions about how much time I was going to have, so I'm, I kept this very sparse. Next slide, please. There are a couple goals in writing the requirements draft, and one of them was to try to come to a common understanding of actors and terms in DOTS. Uh, it seemed to me through the discussions on the mailing list that there was some disagreement here, and so the requirements draft is partially intended to try to expose those things and, uh, and force us to come to that common understanding. Um, additionally, um, I'm hoping to develop a consensus on the protocol needs. Uh, again, I think there's been some disagreement and some confusion about what's required here. Next slide, please. 
All right, so as I said, it's brand new and there are some subsections. Uh, what I did try to do was define some of the terms, um, the various endpoints, including uh, who was responsible for sending the signal, who was responsible for processing it, uh, and what the signal was gonna, going to contain. And as Daniel alluded to, um, I feel like the, the basic dots signal needs to contain that alert, that request for help. I've also included some uh, information about attack telemetry, whatever might be available to the signaler. Um, and so I'm, I'm uh, looking for a lot of feedback. There's been uh, only a little bit on the list. I've had some offline feedback too. Um, and the, the feedback to date has largely been around some of the clarifications of terms. Um, there has been uh, a little bit of, of uh, um, some, some question about the, the relevance of the uh, DTLS section I included when talking about the, uh, the need to encrypt uh, or the need to provide confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. Um, that is, again, partially uh, meant to elicit some uh, disagreements or some friction uh, on the, the understanding of what DOTS is supposed to be providing. Um, this is positioned for rapid development and revision. I'm hoping to make some very quick progress on this, so again, I'm, I'm looking for feedback. Next slide. Um, the next steps are again to incorporate that feedback uh, and make very rapid progress on this. I'm, I'm hoping to have the, uh, the next revision of the draft out shortly after this IETF uh, concludes. So please take a look, please provide your feedback. There are some subsections and one of them is the configuration channel. Um, I have made some allusions in there about what that might constitute and uh, Nick's draft does include some um, suggestions about using what he describes as a JSON RPC API. Um, I have suggested RESTConf. That is not necessarily a, a requirement at this point, but uh, given the uh, RPC element that he's suggested, uh, RESTConf seemed like a, a possible candidate. Um, the revision of the terminology, improving, improving the, the terminology uh, and expanding it based on feedback is going to be critical. Uh, I have included here the mention of any required data models. Um, that is a sort of longer term target, but figuring out the requirements for the data, mo data models at this stage, I feel also will help set the course. Uh, and finally, it will be very important for the requirements draft to be uh, mapped to any use, new use cases, any revised use cases, um, fitting the requirements draft to uh, any architecture documents that we develop also will be very important as we begin working on the, the transport itself. Uh, and uh, at, um, the operational requirements are going to require alignment as well. That is the end of my slide deck. Questions? Hi, Scott Barbic, uh, Carrero. So first of all, I like the draft. Um, Thank you. But I wasn't quite sure, because most of it's terminology, mm -hmm. and so I wasn't quite sure if I, I, I was actually calling those requirements Mm -hmm. or set up for the requirements, you know, the, mm -hmm. the supplicant will uh, yes. do something or, you know, so in your mind is, are those requirements yet or just the, it's, it's the base. Yeah. I think draft. it's, it's at this point, it's, it's sort of the base draft. It's, it's establishing terms that come terminology. It does not necessarily have to be within the requirements draft. Uh, so yeah, cause I didn't see a lot of wills or shalls or. I agree. Must. Yeah. Um, Tobias Gunram, a uh, clarifying question. <laughs> when you, thought about the requirements, did you review the existing use case drafts or only some of them, all of them to derive some ideas from them? I did, yeah. I, uh, I have to admit, I primarily derived that some of the information from uh, Daniels and uh, made reference to, to Nick's draft. Um, I had not spent very much time with the, the extended use cases prior to writing. Other Any questions? questions? Okay, thanks, Andrew. And you teed up the next presentation, which is about operational requirements. So, Chris and Roland, you can come up. Okay. Hi, everyone. I am Roland Evans with Arbor Networks, and uh, this is a presentation that Chris uh, Morrow from Google and I put together to kind of outline the operational requirements that we see for DOTS. Next slide, please. So, introduction and context. Next slide. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so DDoS attacks are attacks against capacity and state. The idea is to disrupt availability. Next slide. Um, we Nick, go ahead and advance the next slide. Yeah, we want to be able to maintain availability even in the face of attack. Next slide, please. Next slide. So um, most endpoint networks um, on the internet have a relatively placid view most of the time of their security posture. The sky is blue. They have a white picket fence to keep things out. Next slide. And then this happens. You know nothing of DDoS defense, John Snow. And he doesn't know much about malicious insiders either. Next slide, please. So when that happens, who do they call? Next slide. Typically ISPs and MSSPs. And unfortunately, despite all the various advances that we've made uh, technologically, we still tend to use uh, a variation on a 350-year-old technology to communicate um, the need for assistance. Next slide, please. So it's very, very difficult for most endpoint organizations to communicate effectively um, their requirements for DDoS mitigation in real time. There's a lot of reasons for this, um, under provisioning on the part of operators who provide DDoS mitigation services is a big problem. Um, also, um, there are various solutions out there um, that are used, various technologies that are used, but basically each deployment uh, of a DDoS mitigation system of some kind tends to be a very bespoke custom kind of solution. And because there's, a, there's uh, currently a lot of manual work required to do the provisioning as well as the operation, um, it can become a very long and involved process to even notify a provider that there's a need for DDoS mitigation assistance, much less to effectively communicate what's required. Next slide, please. So there are methods today to automate some of this communication. The problem is that they are proprietary, and so there's an element of vendor lock-in here. And what we want to be able to accomplish with DOTS is we want um, organizations who need DDoS mitigation uh, protection to be able to mix and match. We want them to be able to pick different vendors, different implementations, different providers, and have assurance that there is a programmatic way that they can very quickly communicate when they are under attack and receive situationally appropriate um, assistance. There's also an application here for inter-provider communications as well. Um, when you're an endpoint network, you have multiple transit links, for example. You have multiple uh, um, operators, MSSPs, um, who are providing DDoS mitigation services. They may have radically different implementations with different paradigms. And so it becomes, it, it really becomes incumbent upon the end customer who, who's under attack to try to coordinate all of this. Many times they don't have the instrumentation, they don't have the skill set, they don't have the people. And so effective, quick DDoS mitigation in those circumstances uh, can be well nigh impossible in many circumstances. Next slide, please. So what happens is DDoS defense devolves into a typing contest between the attackers, next slide, and the defenders, who in many cases are blindfolded because they don't receive adequate information from the organizations they're trying to protect. Next slide, please. Um, and as history shows us, when we have largely static, low agility defenses that may not be deployed optimally, next slide, this is what happens. Next slide, please. So 20 years ago, DDoS mitigation was coordinated using email and the telephone. Next slide, please. 10 years ago, DDoS mitigation was coordinated using email and the telephone. Next slide, please. Today, this is how DDoS mitigation is largely coordinated. Next slide, please. We have to do better than this, rather than fumbling around the phone, jotting notes, and flipping through our various playbooks. Next slide, please. We need a standardized way to share this information. Next slide. Across a very fast, unreliable transport that can get the information through very, very quickly. Next slide. We also need to have an option for a good old reliable transport that can weave its way through policies which may not allow the unreliable transport through. Next slide. This protocol, this needs to be able to describe itself and what the problem is and what its desired outcome is. Next slide. We also need to be able to relay um, these requests for assistance as well as responses in status um, across um, administrative boundaries 
also between um, stateful and stateless uh, transports. We want everyone and everything to have the opportunity to participate, not just bespoke systems that are designed very specifically to do DDoS mitigation. Next slide, please. And we want to be able to bring them together so that we can all bring our shields up and tune them to the frequencies that the Klingons are using on their phasers so that we can have a, an agile defense that can react very quickly when the attackers change their vectors and circumstances change. Next slide, please. I'll hand it over. Hi, I'm Chris. The mic's too slow. Too low. All right, so next slide, please. So as, as Roland said, we're looking for some standards-based approach so that my six vendors can talk to each other when I have a problem. And I don't have to worry about having six signalers on my side and controlling and managing and dealing with all of that. Uh, I'd like to make sure that I don't send a request that says, please do this specific thing to the far side. Right? I want to tell them, I have this problem. Help me solve it. I want them to tell me back, I got your message. I'm going to do something or I'm not going to do something based on their capabilities. And I also like the ability to make sure that I send it to the right person, that they hear from the right person. So they're not just getting messages from any random person saying, Chris wants help and killing me. So next please. Um, I need to be able to, to say what it is I'm trying to do. Like I have a web server, it's getting sin flooded. Like that's a sort of basic stuff needs to be in the, in the protocol set. Uh, I need to be able to say like, it's okay to kill this thing. Just, just make the pain stop. I don't care about my billing services today. I want my search stuff or whatever it is to work. Right. Um, you may want to include some information about like, please rate limit to this level or please deal with requests that look like this type. There's, we can get into that in the protocol further down the road, but I need a packaging system to do that in a standard fashion. Um, and also, as, as Roland said, I may have multiple arms inside my company that need to do something or inside of my deployment that need to do something. You may have multiple inside of yours. If I need to talk to you, I need to make sure that the right part of your company gets my conversation, right? And working at it, previously working at a large telco, there are lots of arms of any telco or ISP. Making sure you get the right messages to the right people is not always easy. So next slide, please. Um, Oftentimes, the, as Warren said, or Warren, as Roland said, the uh, the systems on the far side they're not what you would expect, right? It's not always a, an Arbor TMS or a Carrero, whatever they call it these days. You know, what, sorry, I forget what they call them. You can correct me later. Um, whatever those things are, right? I may have only the capability in this particular deployment to deal with the router. So if I say, please rate limit this stuff or please block this URL, like you you have to be able to tell me I can't block the URL. Sorry. Or I can rate limit, but only to this level, or only to this type of stuff. I can only do TCP. I can't do UDP for whatever reason. Routers are crazy sometimes. Um, either way, I, I need to know that, right? I need to be, and I need to be flexible in saying, like, I need you to do this thing, uh, transform that into something that's functional if possible. Uh, and it, hopefully, this is relatively simple for a communication. So, um, I, I'd also <laughs> really would like to be able to know that my DOS service provider upstream is still there. Right. So if I use a DOS service provider that's, you know, two AS hops away, I may have made a relationship with them, you know, a year ago. If they go out of business or disappear or change their deployment, I need to be able to know that before I get attacked. Right. As a, again, working at a large telco, when when someone calls you up and says, are you my ISP? I think I'm under attack. Right. That's that's really not the best start of the conversation. Um, so it'd be good to know this, you know, ongoing to ha have you know, a reliable communication to them on a regular basis. It'd be great if uh, I could tell more than one person from my deployment, right? I have two ISPs as uplinks. I'd like to be able to have both of them the same story if possible. Um, yep, that's it. I think we don't really have much else than that to say. So if anybody has questions, I think it would be good to hear them. Three, two, one. It'd also be good to know how many people in this room have actually built and deployed a DOS mitigation system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. You don't, you don't count. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I think it's interesting that, that those are the folks you all should really be talking to. You know, how to make this work, right? Because they have those guys have got deployments that are made of multiple different systems. Please, please go. Uh, Doug Montgomery again. So is there a tight definition of DDoS here, as opposed to other kinds of threats, anomaly so detection? I think that Roland's early, one of his early slides said, we need to be concerned with maintaining availability. So if it's, you know, ping of death, right, there's a solution for that. If it's 200 gigabit 
reflected DNS attack, there's a solution to that, right? I mean, I think Dots cares that there's a that somebody says, I have a problem, please help me. I don't think we really care so much. What if, it, what if it's a low bandwidth port scan that will proceed? The, then the provider up. upstream will say, yeah, sorry. Right? I mean, I think it's okay that there's a range so that of seems to be, stuff. That seems to be saying specifically focused on volume attacks. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, go ahead, Rob. Yeah. So uh, to, to be clear, um, we want this to be agnostic in terms of DDoS attack methodologies. We want it to be uh, agnostic in terms of the specificity of uh, DDoS mitigation technologies that are being used. Um, and also, we want to keep an eye on other use cases beyond DDoS, but we don't want to try to solve security in this working group. We want to actually focus on the DDoS use case so that we can get something out there. And this may be applicable to other things as well, but it's absolutely not focused on any particular type or category of, of DDoS uh, mitigation uh, vectors. I think, I think, I'm sorry, DDoS vectors? Yeah. I think what is a DDoS attack is not super important, right? The, the fact is, as a customer, I perceive a problem and I would like it to be resolved. So um, just as a small note, we have nine more minutes to go. We can start taking questions in general about use cases. Um, but I basically have to cut the mic and have to ask you to be brief uh, so we can also come to a hum on the next steps soon. Thank you. Okay, no question on, on Jabber. Just to let you know, one hand went up when you asked about DDoS. Okay, thanks. You look back, so go. Okay. Uh, my name is Dao Yan. Uh, I'm not sure this is a, a operational uh, requirement or not. So currently, actually, <clears throat> uh, some uh, network uh, provider has no um, strong motivation to stop uh, the interdomain attack traffic because there is a, they can charge more uh, from other domain because of this kind of attack traffic. So sure, but it's it's not important <coughs> if they have a motivation. It's important that the protocol support it. So uh, right? it might never get used for that. So is this the kind of requirement is uh, uh, under consideration? I, I'm pretty sure that it's an operational requirement and has been for many years. Uh, so so do we have a solution for for this problem? Uh, that's what DOTS is supposed to address in terms of allowing an automated way of communications, both uh, intra and interorganizationally. Uh, I'm handing over to the left-hand side at this moment. Thank you. Hey, yeah, just, uh, I mean, it's kind of a segue perhaps, but I think it will come up that the, the definition of DDoS, we'll have to check ourselves along the way to make sure it's actually the D in DDoS, you know, distributed or, or large scale or something that might have us change protocols or, or use a specific protocol because it's not just, you know, somebody's decision to send one slow loris in, you know, that's not necessarily DDoS, but something that it, that would blow through. That's not important to the protocol that says I have a problem. Uh, I don't it, it's important to the scope that says that I'm not going to solve everything. I'm going to focus no, but on I, things. <laughs> what we're talking about is, I think, is build me a protocol that does this, that vendors, and users can agree to use, right? And I, I don't. I mean, I think what the data, what the attack is, is not important to that conversation, right? No. I, I understand. I understand the genesis of your comment, right? And I think that as we start working towards actual requirements, that this will become clear. Um, but but the intent here is to be universal in nature, and one way of being universal in nature is to describe what is being attacked, you know, with some basic, you know, kind of verb as to what you would like to have happen. And then all the rest of it is provisioned up here and there's you know automation and rule sets and things of that nature. I limit the, I cut the mic and only the last comments coming here on the left side, please. Sanjay Mishra, uh, Verizon. Uh, just I wanted to have a quick comment on the gentleman that was pointing on the motivation of uh, trying to prevent the DDoS attack. So as a carrier, I can speak that, um, you know, the, the discussion here is actually much more uh, you know, sensical to us 
And uh, I know of no reason for when you could not prevent DDoS attack for any reason. So, uh, you know, that's all. Thank Thanks. you very much. I think that's a very nice uh, closing point to the uh, open discussion. I'm sorry that we have to cut uh, so short, but I wanted to also have a few last minutes to ask questions um, to get a feeling how we can move forward. Uh, I think you see some of the questions um, Roman put before uh, that we should address. If you have other questions that you think we should address, um, I'm also happy to take them as well. Uh, I'm very conscious that we are between you and the castle, so yeah, I'm careful with that. So if you have questions, then raise them now, but please be brief. Uh, Roland Dobbins, Arbor Networks. I actually have a lot of very detailed notes um, on the draft. I won't get into that right now. What I do want to say is that, in my view, um, what we've really seen that, that have been described as use cases are not use cases. Um, these are model architectures. They have varying degrees of correspondence with what is actually um, be being done. And I think that what we really need to do is to take some of the useful comments um, out of those and combine them with additional thoughts and come up with a unified um, use cases draft. Um, what we have right now, um, in, in many cases, is overly prescriptive. Um, in some cases, it's underly, under prescriptive. And um, there's also, I think, an, some, something of a lack of awareness of the current state of the art. And so we need to reconcile all of those and make sure that our use cases are really use cases and are not architectural reference documents. We may need architectural, you know, reference models, but but what we saw today being described as use cases were not use cases, in my opinion. Noted as a comment in favor of uh, combining drafts and consolidating. Next one, please. Uh, I think you were first, and then yeah, you first. Yep. Um, is there any notion of uh, Doug Montgomery again? Is there any notion of clearly Differentiating attacks from what could be you know, a provision of service attack that you're poorly engineered and you're being overrun by your own traffic. Is this a question you want me to ask, or um, is this a question to the room? Well, one if, could one could envision, um, you know, do you, do you envision? having to convey some notion of that other than I, I just want you to get rid of this traffic. I'm, okay. I'm not trying to prove to you that it's an attack. Yeah. I just want you to get rid of it. So, so at this point, I feel that we need to get to the next steps. And I'm, I'm really sorry for kind of cutting this. But I would encourage this question maybe to put to the mailing list. I just noticed that everyone used the word attack. And I'm sure that's yeah. the 99.9% yeah. .9 yes. thing you're Noted. going to deal with. But. Noted. Noted. Um, yes. Yeah. Rick, Rick Saul Zachman, I just want to re reinforce the point about the current use cases. They really read as block diagrams from implementers and not something that the user would actually use. So I'm more concerned about what is it we're trying to protect and what's the threat model that we're protecting against. So Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. really going to cut the mic now. Okay. Yeah. You, you can speak. Okay. okay. Completely agree. And I mean, the, the draft should be completely rewritten. I mean, in my case. Uh, okay. So um, this is actually a very nice uh, kind of hand over towards the question, should we combine the drafts? Uh, should we uh, write a new one completely? Um, how can we put this? The first question would be, should we have one unified use case draft? Would that be an acceptable question? Uh, so OK, I have some. Yes. Uh, quickly, um, Bob Moskowitz. If we're going to RFC, you want a single unified draft. Okay. If the use case is not going to RFC, it's a significant expenditure of time of everybody to get the various authors, authors to get to a unified writing style. Uh, our intention is to go to RFC. This is part of the milestones in the charter. The, the, so, then, then, yeah. then, yes, you want Okay. To. So uh, then, okay, then let me give a hum. So who is in favor of starting one unified instead of, oh, I see our AD getting up. Oh, okay, so let me go to a hum. Uh, who is in favor of starting a new unified use case draft for dots? Please hum now if you're in favor. Who is against? Please hum now. Okay, this sounds like rough consensus. Um, 
let me actually ask you who would be interested in editing who would be volunteering to edit such a draft hands up okay that's a lot of hands that's one two three four five six seven, like ten fifteen no twelve twelve roughly yeah yeah well yeah okay so um you can later get your names known to the working group chairs please who would be willing to review this kind of draft that's roughly the same amount of hands maybe a little bit more okay so 15 okay good then i think that step is clear way ahead for the requirements discussion this kind of leads to the same question a little bit should we have sorry excellent uh can you later give us the name of the person so we can haunt him um for the requirements discussion should we also unify the requirements documents into one is that not so essential um uh, any is that a question i can ask for is there any okay i'll, I'll go ahead um who is in favor of us unifying the requirements draft please ham now okay who is against uh unifying the requirements draft please ham now there i hear a little humming yeah so it's like still rough consensus might be in favor of unifying looking at the id she's nodding yeah okay um so uh and the last question would be oh yeah who's in who's willing to edit uh requirements draft hands up okay that's less that's only 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 well that's still 10 like still a lot of okay that's great that's great <laughs> and a huge diverse group excellent uh who's willing to review 12 yep um and mo moving to the last question i'm interested in actually implementers so who will be implementing solutions or has plans on implementing solutions based on what dots is producing based on the use cases you have seen so far that's one two three four six seven well, 12, 12, 12, 12 implements. Looks, looks good. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to close here and, uh, I'm sorry that we had to cut short our first meeting, but we had only 60 minutes and, um, I wish you a great evening at the social. There's one more thing. Just want to know, we didn't get a chance to talk to about three drafts. You've seen Nick's draft, which is draft head, you open threat signaling one. There's some updates there. And then Taru has actually posted two new drafts that we haven't talked about at all. So please do take a look at them and put them on the mailing list. And before we can go see the castle, who has the blue sheet? Who has the blue sheet? Who hasn't signed the blue sheet? And exactly. Who has not signed the blue sheet? Go there and, oh, wow. So many people have not signed. Okay. This is really bad. So please do sign the blue sheet because this is really important. Otherwise, next time you're going to be in a room for 10 people and 50 people fighting for chairs. Yeah. Please sign. Thank you very much for coming. See you later.